Hello there and welcome back. Welcome to part 31 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I'm focusing on a deck. Uh, I'm still waiting on a few components to come through for a deck, namely the 3D prints for the Grand Staircase forward and aft, um, but I've decided to make a start on it because I really do want to crack on with it because it sort of unlocks a lot of additional work I can do. Uh, so today I'm preparing the forward section, uh, adding window frames, painting, doors, that sort of paraphernalia, um, and I'm going to make a start on the writing room as well. So I will hand over to myself a couple of weeks ago and crack on. So to kick off, um, the first thing I did was to um, do some lightning works on B deck. Um, this comes back to what I was saying in the last episode about being sort of a good idea to save any weight that I could. Um, so I'm using a sort of Dremel tool here just to cut out unnecessary sections of plastic. Um, one thing to say with the Dremel, make sure you do wear safety glasses because as you can see evidence on the screen right now, the cutting discs do break um, and they do fly everywhere at speed. So make sure you wear protective glasses when you're doing this sort of stuff. So as you can see, here is the lighter weight B deck now. Uh, and I've just cut out plastic sections that I don't need. Um, and this just comes from the last episode where I was sort of saying it might be prudent to save weight in various places. I'm, I'm not convinced I really need to, um, but I don't, I don't see any reason not to, you know. And by cutting out this plastic, I have saved a fair amount of weight. I mean, if you look at the thickness of that plastic, it's really thick and it isn't insubstantial in terms of weight. So probably worthwhile doing. So here's the front portion of a deck sort of deck housing area. Uh, and I'm doing the reading room today. Not a big area on Titanic because, well, because it wasn't very well utilised on the Olympics, so the uh, the space for the room was cut down on Titanic. Uh, and the reading room is essentially sort of here-ish, and then you've got the lounge behind it. Uh, so we need to decorate this area here. Um, now, there is an issue with the plastic. Um, I've already shown you the sort of filing of the holes and stuff like that, but there is another issue, which is that there should be another window like this here on this wall. Um, now, I'm pretty co I'm pretty confident the reason that it's not in the kit probably isn't an oversight. It's probably because it was too difficult to make a piece of tooling that cuts into here. So we're going to do this ourselves. Uh, I'll just drill out a hole and then file it to the, uh, the correct proportions. Um, and it's, it's the sort of thing that I would be half tempted to leave it, but the only reason I'm, I am actually going to add it is because I sort of feel like if I'm going to all this effort to decorate the space, I want to make damn sure people can actually see it, you know? Um, so by cutting into the window, I'm opening up another aperture for people to actually be able to see into the room. Um, so that's what we're going to do first. So I'm just opening out this hole into the reading room. Uh, I've got one of the windows here. You can see that it fits very nicely into the window hole that's been cut for it. Uh, but what it also does is it gives me a lovely guide to make sure that I actually cut the window to the right size here. So somewhere around there, you know. So what I'm gonna do is I've drilled out this hole and I'm now using my selection of microfiles over here. Uh, currently I'm using the circular one, but when I get nearer the end, I'll start using the flatter one so I can get straight edges. And I'll just open out that hole slowly. Um, as with most things modelling, uh, slow is the optimal word here. Work nice and slow, and you're much less likely to make any mistakes. As you can see, still just opening out the hole, measure twice, three, four, five, six times, cut once. There you have it. Successfully done now. It might not look like an incredibly crisp hole, but as with all these windows, because the frame is comparatively thick, you can actually get away with quite a lot around the edges because the frame will cover all of that slightly rough edge and it'll end up looking like a, a window that's been there all along, just like those two. 
So I've just added the brass photo etch doors to this part, and really I should have done them before I actually painted the thing, but I've done them now. Note these ones at the front because um, the moulding on the kit is actually incorrect, so if you can replace them it's probably worth doing. Um, someone asked me a while ago how I do these doors, um, and I tend to sand the, um, the moulding on the kit down a little bit, um, but I quite like these doors to stick out because it just although it's probably not 100% accurate, uh, it just makes them stand out quite a bit more, which I think is useful, particularly on something like this, where these doors are going to be on the well deck, so they're already going to be, you know, four or five centimetres away from someone looking at the model. It just makes the door a bit more obvious. I've also now painted this section of a deck deck housing in white. Um, unlike B deck, the windows here are quite large, or certainly they're larger. They get they tend to get larger as they go up the ship. Um, so this means that I can't um, get away without having glass in the windows. Um, so we're going to have to see how to do this. I'm not entirely sure how. That was my clock. Um, not entirely sure how. I've got some very very thin sheets of acrylic, clear acrylic which might do the job, but I'm a bit worried that the window frames are going to stick out too much from beyond the um, from beyond the actual deck house. So I might have to do a wee bit of experimenting before I actually arrive at a final conclusion to this one, um, but we'll see. Right, so getting this glass sorted, um, I've already done one of the lounges windows here. You can see that looks quite nice. You can see the leading in the windows and also the window frame itself. Um, <clears throat> and here's one of the reading room windows that I've done here. And again, there is now glazing in that. What I've used is some very, very thin plastic sheets. It's almost like that sort of old stuff you used to write on when you used overhead projectors, you know. Um, <clears throat> The leading for the lounger's windows uh, is printed onto this sheet, so you just cut it out around the window, then a tiny bit of glue to stick on. Same with these are the smoking room windows above and so on. Uh, there for the dining room, which I'm not going to use, and so on and so on. Um, the printout for these is in the description below, so have a look at that if you're interested. Um, but really the useful bit is the, uh, the very thin plastic and this should now allow me to stick that into the aperture for the window with fairly minimal um, sticking out of this. This shouldn't really stick out much at all because it's not added to the thickness that much. So I'm just going to show you how I'm actually getting these glass panes. So here is a window frame that I've cut out. This is for the writing room uh, and I'm laying it on top of this thin plastic that I've got. Then all I'm going to do, let's go down here instead, just butt it up into the corner. And then all I'm going to do is use the frame as a guide. So I'm not cutting there, but I've scored the glass. I'm referring it to as glass. I mean, it's not, it's plastic, but there you are. And then I can go along and cut it when the frame isn't there. So there's a bit less risk of damaging it or anything like that. Because remember, all these bits are fiddly. And there we are. So now we've got a bit of glass frame. And I'm just going to clean it before I go any further. I, I do wash my hands quite regularly when I'm modelling, but even so, you are still going to get a bit of grease building up on your hands, which is not ideal for this sort of thing, because you're never going to be able to clean these window panes, so you do want them to be as clean as possible. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a very small dab of glue into each corner of the window and when I say small I really do mean small so there's four of those now okay 
Now I'm dropping the window frame down onto the glass. Just holding it in place. I'm touching the back of the window because that's the bit I can clean, but the front I'm not touching because I'll not be able to clean that. And that will dry relatively fast. And there's actually there's still a wee bit of overlap there, so I will just go and chop that off. I think I got rid of it. Yeah, there we are. There we are. So I'll now give it another clean, just on the back. There we are. It's not perfect by any means. Um, there are still bits that you can, you know, there are imperfections that you can see, but... So here I'm just adding the windows to the front portion of a Dex Deck housing. Right, I'm just going to go over again how I do these windows because uh, it's not necessarily clear to everyone when I do a time lapse. So, glue them in with Flex CA. Uh, first things first, I cut out the window with a sharp blade. These have all been pre painted in the appropriate wooden colour. And then I tend to turn it over onto the shiny side just to check that I haven't left any nubs of metal exposed because they will stick out a bit on a white background. Um, so that's what I do next. Then I use one of these. This is a, uh, a pin sewing needle which has just had a sort of like cut taken out of it so it's got a step on it and this is great because you can get some glue on it and then use that little step to slot into the window frame and you get a really nice accurate application of glue all around the window like that and then it's a case of picking up the window frame with a piece of blue tack in my case and placing it into the aperture and just making sure it's correctly seated there we are and that'll dry of its own volition quite happily And here's a close-up, and they do look really nice, don't they? I think the um, the crisp lines between the white of the deck house and the brown of the actual window frames themselves really makes them pop, makes the thing stand out. We're about three weeks later now, and as you can see, that aperture I cut does actually look quite nice. Uh, you can't really see the fact that it's cut. The only, the only thing that makes it look different to the pre-cast hole is that this frame sits flush. This one sits slightly proud, but it's a relatively minor detail. However, I have made a slight error, because if we look at the instructions on the KA set, you can see here there's the hole that I just cut there. But unfortunately, what I didn't see was that there are two holes here for windows that need to be cut on this face here. Now, in sporting terms, we'd call this a bit of an unforced error because three weeks ago, 
this was just a piece of plastic so I could handle it and touch it with my greasy hands and push files in and out of that hole, happy, it doesn't really matter what happens. Now, however, it's a very nicely painted piece of plastic with very fine photo etch parts inside it. So as you can see, before it was a part that you could pretty much manhandle. Now it's a part that you have to look after quite carefully and it's going to be a lot more tricky to cut the two holes in here that I need to do. So as I say, a bit of an unforced error on my part and I'm not entirely sure how I missed it, but I do want to put them in because as with the same argument for this area, if I'm going to go about decorating the first class entrance, I want to make damn sure people can see it. So I'm going to cut these um, and we'll just have to see how we go. Right, there we are. They're in and they look really good. So I'm happy with those, um, but it's worth saying Certainly don't want to be doing that again. I just need to get the door on there now, and then we're all done. And there we are with the doors. Obviously, not the band. So now to make a start on the interiors. Uh, in this clip, I'm just using the Titanic's uh, A deck deck plan to um, just draw out uh, the rough location of rooms on uh, my actual a deck itself um, this is quite useful because you can sort of you can you can picture more easily where rooms go um, and this is good for planning in terms of working out how much space you've got where you need to put lights because if you're not careful with that walls can obstruct lights and that kind of thing um, but also things like um, things like the m3 bolts I'm using to bolt all these decks together um, by working out which areas are going to be visible and which areas aren't going to be visible, I can then plan where these bolts go more effectively to hide them. So there you can see the rooms laid out, with my fantastic handwriting illustrating where everything needs to go. So in this clip I'm just cutting out all of the various pieces I need for the reading and writing room. Um, and I'm just cutting off any of the support material that adheres to them. Uh, when you 3D print these things, you tend to have to have support material with them because they're fairly fiddly little pieces. Um, so I tend to cut that off as soon as possible because it's just... Uh, the, the, there's no need for it on the parts, really. So here we have all of the furniture for the reading and writing room in a glass of alcohol. Not my best vodka, I have to admit. This is isopropyl alcohol. Uh, and we're just cleaning off that sort of UV resin stickiness that you get. Because of the process, the way these are made, these are made by um, a UV resin um, 3D printer. You end up with a small amount of uncured resin sticking to the parts. Uh, and you can remove that by just dousing and rinsing these in alcohol beforehand. And that stops them being horrible and sticky and makes them nice and uh, smooth, and then I can sand them down and then paint them. Once you've got rid of all the stickiness with the alcohol, um, you sort of reveal the final shape of the part. Um, and occasionally there's a few little issues that you need to sort of sand off. So in this clip, I'm just going through each of the parts individually and just making sure that there aren't any little additional nubs of plastic that need to be sanded off or any slight forming errors or anything like that that needs to be addressed before I move on to painting. Right, so that's all the furniture now sort of trimmed down and all the excess parts taken off. So before we go any further and paint, I am just going to give them a second rinse in alcohol. Just because sometimes if you've got a lot of the um, unwanted bits of resin sticking up, you sometimes are left with a uncured resin beneath that, which wasn't stripped out by the first rinse of alcohol. So just going to do it again. There's no, you know, you're not going to sort of dissolve the parts or anything if you put them in too long. So there's no harm in this. Uh, it's a bit of a messy process. You can see you end up with sort of bits and bob off cuts everywhere and dust and stuff. So um, it's not the nicest process in the world, but you do end up with very nice furniture. And so once it's done, you can see now the water's, the, the, the alcohol's a lot more murky than it was. Uh, and once done, I just get them all out. And just leave them on a piece of tea towel or cloth for a 
few minutes to dry. Of course, the beauty of alcohol is it doesn't really need to dry. It's, um, the alcohol will evaporate off. So, you know, give it five, ten minutes and it will be completely bone dry anyway. Um, it's not like water, which might take quite a while. This will just evaporate off sharpish. And there we are. These are now ready for painting. So just in preparation for the painting, uh, I'm doing exactly what I've done before. Um, and this is the first model I've actually used this technique, but I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. Um, it just seems to work really well. So what I've done is I've got some upside down masking tape here and then held on with right way up masking tape over there. And all I'm doing, I'm just sticking all of the pieces that require painting onto it. And this, theoretically, holds the pieces in place while I paint them. So I'm just assembling my uh, pot plants. Uh, and it's the same process I did last time, but it's quite a while since last time, so uh, I shall show it. So what I've done is I've got some sort of cubes of plastic, and they look pretty rough and ready at the moment, but I've drilled a hole in the top. And all I'm gonna do is insert a piece of brass bar, well, brass rod, into them with a dipping of glue on the end and you end up with something which gives a, a fairly good representation of a plant pot. Certainly, I mean, it's perfectly acceptable for this scale anyway, by the time that's painted in a brown sort of colour and I put some foliage on, I think that'll look quite good really. And once you've done that, you just chop off the end at whatever length you desire, and there you have it. So do one more. I'm making ten plant pots for the writing room, whether I need all of them or not. I do not know. We will see. There we are, same again, glued in place. And then just chopped off at its desired length. I think it's important with these sort of things not to make them too uniform. You know, these are plants, they're living things. They are gonna have a bit of variety amongst them. Um, so there we are, carry on with those. Hello, and welcome to the shed. Um, I'm just about to spray the furniture for the writing room. You'll notice that I've taken out the fireplace uh, because that isn't being painted, uh, or at least not yet. Now, the colour of wood I've gone for is uh, it's Humbrol 186. Um, and I don't know if you can quite see in the camera, but it's quite a sort of, it's a medium sort of rich brown kind of colour. Uh, it's quite different to this colour, which I've used on other wooden items around the ship. Um, and the reason for that is because the writing room is quite a light room. You know, it's white panelled walls, it's got um, pink uh, carpets, pink curtains. Uh, it's quite a light feeling sort of room. And I feel like the sort of deep, deep, dark woods that you might get in the smoking room 
might be a wee bit too dark here it might look a little bit silly so um that's what i've gone for uh paint is in the airbrush over here uh, and i've thinned it down with cellulose thinners i tend to use uh, about 50 50 paint cellulose thinners um so i'll turn on the inverter and the compressor Uh, what I'm doing there is I'm just putting my finger over the airbrush so that the air pressure can't escape uh, and then pulling back on the stick and what happens is the air is forced back through the cup and it provides quite a useful means of mixing up the paint in there um, so you don't end up with the thick paint at the bottom going through the uh, the needle and the thinner cellulose thinners at the top. So I'll just check it's actually flowing okay and then we'll crack on. crack on. Forgot to say, always wear a mask when you're doing this. I use these. These are FFP3 masks. Um, I'm also doing this in the shed, so I don't have to worry about fumes and stuff building up uh, in my own home. Obviously, I don't sleep in here, so that's very useful. Um, but just make sure you wear a mask, because you don't want to be breathing in this stuff. It is not good in your lungs. Neither is enamel paint. I also tend to wear glasses, because I don't really fancy having either of these things in my eyes, either. And when you're doing stuff like this, you can get paint splashing everywhere. So the take home message is just be careful with this sort of thing, really. Right, let's crack on. So I'm just doing the finer painting on the tables to start with <clears throat> and from what I can tell the tables have sort of table plots on them um, so that's what I'm trying to recreate here I've got obviously the wooden legs and then the tops have been painted in a cream color same cream color that I used in the a la carte restaurant uh, and the number is Humbrol 103 so I'm going to use that on all of the table covers. I'm also going to use it as the base colour on the chairs. Um, I then might add some additional colours to represent cushions and that sort of thing. So I just thought I'd show you the process I'm using to paint these um, sofas. This is the final one. And what I'm trying to achieve is I'm trying to achieve the look um, of an upholstered sofa, but with a wooden frame. Um, as far as I can tell, most of the sofas on the Titanic were not of the modern sort, where your upholstery largely covers the actual frame of the sofa itself. Uh, on all the pictures I can see, you've got quite a defined wooden frame uh, with upholstery surrounding it. So that's what I am trying to do here. So what I've done is in advance I've painted these brown, as I've shown you, with the airbrush. And now I'm going over... with this cream colour paint, uh, which helpfully is quite thick, which is helpful in the sense I need to do one coat per, um, per sofa, you see. See, I've now done the inside of this last sofa and you can see that I've deliberately left the top uh, open. I'll see if I can paint this in such a way that you can see what I'm doing on the side as well. 
So I'm filling in the side to give the idea that there's a cushion there. But I'm leaving that back bit and the arm and the other side. So it shows again that there's a sort of a wooden frame that is exposed. And we'll do the same on this side now. There you have it. So if I take you in closer now, you can see what I mean that all of these sofas show. They have a sort of structure to them. So now when I add cushions, once this cream is dried, the sofas will look more like actual sofas and less like sort of cream lobs, you know. So I'm just doing the chairs and the idea I'm going for is similar to the sofas really. Uh, a wooden frame around the top where your arms would go, wooden on the legs, but then the actual the sides, the curve, and the actual sort of basin of the chair in cream. So I have finally done all of the chairs, tables and sofas for the writing room. Still got the plants to go, but the latest endeavour has been the chairs. And what I've done is, I've, again, a bit like the sofas, I've tried to maintain a little bit of wooden frame. You can see that there's a bit of wooden frame all around the base where the legs are. And then there's also a frame around the top where, you're, um, where you rest your arms, you know. Uh, and I might, a bit like the sofas, I might put some cushions in one or two of them just to give a bit more sort of colour variation. Um, unlike the smoking room, um, this room will probably have a few people in it because my sort of, you know, 3pm in the afternoon um, is the sort of time when this room might have been used in a way that the smoking room certainly wouldn't have been used in the afternoon. So um, I'll probably put a few more people in that. So the room probably won't be wanting for much more colour. Um, but, you know, little things like cushions and stuff will add a little bit more scenic interest. They just sort of, you know, catch the eye a bit. And that's the whole point of these sort of rooms, you know, just to sort of make an observer go, oh, 
And that's nice, you know, it just drags their attention in a wee bit more. So onto the plants next, and then I will start on the windows. Right, I'm just going to start doing one of my uh, plants for the writing room. So here we've got the uh, the pots with the stand on it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this green foliage stuff. I'm also going to use some glue. <clears throat> and that'll probably be enough, actually. What I'm going to do is just dip the stalk in glue and then poke the foliage through the uh, actual stalk. Now I don't want these to be really bushy, I want these to look quite sort of uh, refined. So there we are, and of course they will look better once the um, the glue has dried. Um, but what I've done is I've gone for some sort of like bulbous ones at the top, um, some slightly longer ones and thinner ones. So I've got a bit of variety, you know. Uh, I've got a bit of variety across the whole range, and I'll just fit these into the room in places where they look the best. You know, the sort of thinner ones might go in the corners, and the there are the more bulbous ones can go along the walls and that sort of thing. In this clip I am just fitting the carpet for the reading and writing room. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm cutting out a rough shape to start with uh, and then working the shape into the area that I need. So I'll start off by making some rough cuts, um, then trying to sort of impression the piece uh, and then cutting around the more complex shape like the bay windows etc and then finally gluing in place. So I'm just boxing off the reading and writing room here. As you can see, I've done a one wall. On this side, we've got the white panelling and on the other, the oak panelling. Uh, this wall will butt up against here. And then I have another, which is yet to be coated, which goes here, uh, like that. And of course, that's our reading and writing room. So we're at a point now where I can start test fitting my furniture in the reading and writing room. So I've got it up on the screen in front of me. We can see what we need to do, what we need to go put where. So it's just a matter of actually test fitting some of this stuff now. So I'm just looking at the colour schemes for the fireplace in the reading and writing room. Um, 
tricky to get an idea of really what it would have been like. Um, but I'm using the illustrations from Titanic, Honor and Glory for this. Um, and they suggest that the actual fi fireplace itself is white marble. And I actually think that the resin as is does quite a good job of looking like white marble. It has that sort of slightly creamy, slight translucence effect that marble has. Um, the next bit is the actual side of the fire, the surround of the fire itself is sort of surrounded by a, almost what looks like a sort of gold gilt or something. I wonder if it might have been brass. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that in some metallic paint. And then there's some bits of red, sort of rich, sort of pinkish red on the inside, and then the actual fire itself, which I'm going to do um, again in metallic. And we'll see how that looks on the wall. So there we are, there's the first bit, and I'll fill in those additional sections with red in just a bit once this has had a chance to dry. And there we have the fireplace in now. Just need to add the rest of the furniture. So as always, I test fit first um, against the plans, um, just to make sure that I'm sort of getting stuff fitting where I want it. If I, for whatever reason, can't fit all the furniture that I'd like, um, this also then gives me an opportunity to sort of make a decision on what looks good instead, you know. It's an interesting learning experience doing these rooms, actually, because for the first time I'm sort of appreciating the um, the challenge that a ship builder might have fitting in these luxurious rooms around all the gubbins and equipment that you require on a large ocean liner. So we're getting there, <clears throat> slowly but surely. Most of this stuff isn't glued down, by the way. Uh, he isn't, she isn't, he isn't, is she? Essentially what I am trying to do is just build up the room slowly. I know now what I'm aiming for because I've already prototyped it as I showed you before and now it's just a case of putting stuff in, you know? is flanked by <clears throat> two lovely trees or palms or pots or whatever you want to say and then there's another sofa that theoretically that's what's in there it does actually fit but it's just mighty tight in fact let's get that sofa in now so that it's so that it's in It is a nice looking room, I have to say. Yeah, I like the colour scheme, I like the, tr the plants and the, the carpets lovely, and I like the cream that goes with it all, you know, it, it is a nicely appointed room.
Right, so that's the reading and writing room set up. And the next thing that I do, and I don't think I showed it on the, um, the previous rooms I've done, but I tend to go over each of the bits of furniture in turn, anything glued down in the room. And I tend to sort of whack it, well, whack it is a bit of a strong word, but I tend to sort of hit it with a, in this case, a glue spreader, but it doesn't really have to be a glue spreader, just anything. Um, and the idea is just to make sure that everything's glued down because you're much better to do that now when you've got access to the room than later. Because if something's not very well glued down, it will come off at some point. Um, so to make sure that there's none of that now, you're going to save yourself a lot of time later. This still needs to go in, but you can see that it does now complete the room nicely. So there we are, that's the first of the rooms on a deck done. One thing you might notice is that these are not the, um, the expensive figures. Uh, there is the one standing up by the fireplace is, but the rest, um, they're not the 3D printed figures. And the reason for that is because, well, it's twofold. Firstly, because in the set of 3D printed figures, you get very, very few um, sitting down. Um, and I didn't want to use them all up on these areas. But the second thing is, these areas are tricky to see. Um, you don't see much in here. Um, and so I thought it would be worthwhile buying some cheaper figures that, uh, which can be used in the areas which are less visible. Um, it's just sort of, you know, it saves a few pennies in the bank and I don't actually think damages the look of the model or the room in any way. Now you might notice that these rooms appear quite low. Um, and you'd be absolutely right, they do. I mean, initially I was planning on putting a mirror and a clock on the mantelpiece. Um, but it's not really possible because the rooms are so low. And if you look at, for example, the wooden panelling, you'll notice that I've had to chop it off quite a long way before the printout um, stopped. And there's two reasons for this. Firstly, um, on the real ships, on the real Olympic class liners, uh, the reading and writing room and the lounge, and indeed the smoking room, um, all protruded above the boat deck. They actually penetrated above the boat deck and there were skylight windows on the boat deck, um, which allowed additional light into uh, in, in, to, to come through from the boat deck into these rooms. Um, so that's one reason. But also on the trumpeter model, you can see that this part is designed to slot beneath the boat deck, but it's also got its own sort of artificial roof, which I have to confess, I'm not complaining about because it will help massively with light bleed issues. But again, it sort of does clip the height of the rooms even further. And it probably leaves you with about, makes the room probably about four millimetres lower than it should be, which doesn't sound like a lot, but four millimetres in one to 200 scale equates to 800 millimetres uh, in real scale, which, you know, is almost an entire metre difference. So that's why these rooms look so much lower than they actually should be. So that's it for this video. It's getting quite long, so I am going to end it there, and it seems like a logical place anyway. Um, I'm very happy with how it's turned out. I think the uh, the reading and writing room looks very nice now. Um, it's nice to have a room with a bit more life in it. The ones I did um, on the, the lower deck were very pleasant, but there's virtually no people in them, so it seems a bit odd, you know. Um, this is one of the rooms that perhaps would have been used more at the time of day when I'm modelling the, 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 the ship. Um, so the next video will be probably on the lounge, um, but I'll wait and see what happens. As I say, I am still waiting on components to finish off a deck in its entirety, um, so I won't be able to finish that anytime soon, and I'm afraid I won't be able to do the grand staircase, which I know is something that people are interested in seeing. Um, but those are just things beyond my control, I'm afraid. So lounge will probably be next time. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It does help an awful lot. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever, whack them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.